Silvano Samaroli is one of the most legendary independent bottlers of Scotch whiskey. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at one of his most iconic ever bottles. So welcome back to the channel everyone. I'm Mark Littler, I'm a whiskey broker, consultant and market analyst. And if you're interested in rare whiskey, head over to marklittler.com because we've got everything that you need there. Now, in this video, we're celebrating one of Silvano Samaroli's most legendary bottles of whiskey. But do you know who Silvano Samaroli is? Well, you know, in the, in the sort of the era of <laughs> fine cacao and folios, these legends are sort of somewhat pushed to the history books. And that's, that's, that's quite a bad thing, really, because there aren't many history books about Scotch whiskey. Yes, there's loads of blogs and stuff, but in terms of written history, there isn't that much about him. So, Quick fill in on him. So he was an Italian importer and he started his business in 1968 and he was importing brands like Linkwood and Glengarry. In the 1970s, about 1979, he started taking Carden Head's dumpy bottles and relabeling them. So relabeling them with labels that he designed himself. And then from here, that led him on to starting his own cask selection and bottling process to become a true independent bottler. And the first series of bottles that he ever released was called the Never Bottled Top Quality Whiskey Series. It's not that snappy, so it was often referred to as, as the Flowers Series. And this is where you get the Beaumont Bouquet bottling, which is one of the most legendary bottles of all time in terms of the liquid inside. It's just legendary. It's a 50, 60,000 pound bottle of whiskey now. And you would look at it and most people would think, oh, it's just a bottle of whiskey. And that's the thing. A lot of these bottles just look like bottles, but Samaroli was one of the key people to introduce and champion things like cask strength whiskey. And also he wasn't afraid to sort of dilute the whiskies down to a strength that he felt created the best profile for them. So he was quite, I would say revolutionary, but he had a heck of a lot of foresight when the industry didn't necessarily have that foresight. So we owe a real amount to him. Most of the bottlings were done by R.W. Duthie, and that was until sort of like the early 2000s, I believe. And unfortunately, there were some terrible people on the internet who opened these bottles. Some of the worst offenders are malt reviews. So look, you can see them here opening and drinking these bottles, which is nothing short of a crime. So if you want to see people doing something as absurd as drinking whiskey, like what, why? Head over to Mark Reviews, they're awesome guys. They open truly amazing bottles of whiskey like Grand Reservas and the 30 Euro Cherry Oaks and a whole load of Samarolis. So go and give them a check out because they're great guys based in America and do loads of YouTube content. Now at the start of this video, I mentioned that there aren't many books about Scotch whiskey or collecting Scotch whiskey, but that's sort of to ignore the fact that this book exists. And hopefully you will now see our new part of our set which is this top-down camera so we can show you things a little bit better. So this is Emmanuel Drons collecting Scotch whiskey. When you buy it, it doesn't come like this. It comes with nice hard boards and it comes in a nice slip case. But unfortunately, we use this book a heck of a lot and it gets a little bit battered. But it comes with great histories on some of these bottlers. It comes with great interviews. Silvano was a great friend of the author, Emmanuel Dron. And this page features the bottle that we're gonna talk about it. So let's see if we can work a little bit of magic. Well, there we go. We've got it in our hands. It's the Glen Cordor 1964. I'll put that to one side for now. But you can see that being here on the page. Now, this really is a sensational book. If you want to get it, good luck. It's a heck of a lot of book to post, but there's everything that you need to know in here about whiskey. So, why is it called Glen Cordor and what is a whiskey? Well, Glen Cordor is obviously, obviously, a castle in Scotland. And if you know your Shakespeare, it's referred to in Macbeth. And Glen Cordor is a pseudonym that was used by Samaroli to name some of his bottles. Now, in this Emmanuel Drum book, it says, many have wondered which was hidden behind the stunning 1964 sherry cask. The last time I saw him, he told me what it was a spring bank. So there we go. This whiskey, let's just put this massive tome to one side. The whiskey inside this amazing bottle of Glen Cordor is a Springbank from 1964. So let's take a quick look at the bottle then, because it's, it, you know, it's, it's a boring bottle if you want, but it's actually quite attractive in my opinion. I like these browns. It reminds me of the Connoisseur's Choice bottling. So Glen Cordor, obviously, which is a pseudonym for Springbank. 1964, 75 centiliters, and the proof up here as well. And 
all bottle number does, only 360 bottles. This is bottle number 92. And it really is sort of like a really understated whiskey or bottle really, but look at the color of that whiskey. It really is truly incredible. Now, <sighs> these bottles are expensive. There's no two sort of ways to look at it, but they do represent quite an interesting part of the market because it was only in 2015 these bottles were about seven, eight hundred pounds. That's not a lot of money. The record for this price, this bottle came in 2018 and it sold for 14,840 pounds. We've got this on our shop right now for 14,000 pounds and they've rarely come up in auction. There's not been one in auction for over 12 months now. So this really is sort of like one of these bottles that but it highlights an interesting thing here because these are the legendary bottles that most whiskey fans wouldn't be able to distinguish on a shelf. You know, if you look at who, who, at the moment, who makes up the majority of the whiskey collecting market, it's people who are collecting the new editions and the new releases, hence why the prices are being pumped up and pumped up and pumped up for these bottles. These old and rare bottles, they're kind of like hidden, hiding in plain sight. You'll find these in an auction and it might be like, even at its world record price, it's less than a folio one. Seriously, people, what is happening there? So it's it's got so much going for it. It's a 1964 Springbank. Look at the color of it. It's a fantastic, phenomenal sherry cask. I and mean, if you want to know more about the history of Springbank, we did a video up on that a couple of years, probably yeah, over a year ago now on the channel, but we'll put the link in the description below to that so you can go and watch it. But this is really a truly iconic and historic bottle of whiskey. In 20, 30, 40 years time, the folios will just be a blip in the pan, perhaps. These legendary bottles, bottled by the likes of Sylvain Samaroli, are really going to stand the test of time, in my opinion. So there we have it. It's the Glen Cordor 1964. It's expensive. It's £14,000. There's no way to deny that that isn't an expensive bottle of whiskey. But it's less than the world record hammer price for this bottle of whiskey that was achieved only a few years ago. There's not been one at auction for over 12 months. And it is awesome, awesome 1960s Springbank. What more do you need?